I do apologize as we are about an hour or so late uploading this video today, but I think you'll find it's worth it. It was a particularly difficult transfer window, not without its issues, but we solved some problems and we have brought in six new players. But the biggest news has to be that I think this tactic has broken the game because we've taken this bunch of Preston no-hopers and I'm no longer considering the relegation battle. I'm actually thinking about the playoffs. We have turned them into an unbelievable force in the championship. Let's go and kick some balls. Hello and welcome back to The Road to Glory Part 63, Season 7, here at Preston. And what a remarkable season this is turning out to be for us. But before we go into what's been happening, if you are brand new to the channel and you like FM content, then why not subscribe, like, watch and comment, help the channel to grow and help us to support the very, very good stuff that you can see scrolling above up there. And while we are on the subject of that, my sincere thanks to Joel, who has become the latest to contribute to the Just Giving page that we have set up a little while back. And we have now almost raised £200. And if you are of a mind to contribute to the cause, then I'll leave a link to that Just Giving page in the description below. And it doesn't matter if it's even just a pound or two. Every little helps, and together we can make a difference. And today we will have two games for you. We will have the fourth round tie in the FA Cup against League One Plymouth, a game we should win, but a game that I have to take very seriously after we only just managed to overcome Hartlepool in the last round after going two goals behind. And then we will be playing in the Championship at home to Fulham just two days later on Tuesday, so I have to be very careful about squad rotation as we go into these two games. But what a season this has been, and if we just glance over at the table here, you can see that we are now in 8th place, and we have 47 points from our 30 games, and we are just one point behind Cardiff, who are sitting in 6th in the playoff spots. And that is something that I just did not envisage when I came to Preston and took over this team, and it's to do with this asymmetric tactic, and I really do believe that it has broken the game. I really don't understand what is going on with it, but it is just an amazing formation and it just seems so adaptable and you can switch your roles around, you can do whatever you like and it still seems to work. And if we look at using this, what has happened on the pitch since you were last here, when you were last here, you saw us have that crazy 3-3 draw at home to Middlesbrough, a game that I th had absolutely given up at the end and said right at the end that we were going to have to face defeat here where we scored that last second goal to take a point a game we should have won in my opinion but I was quite happy at that point just to take a point but look what's happened since we followed that up with a 2-0 away victory at MK Dons and then against Hartlepool in the FA Cup third round we had to come from two behind and I was not very happy with the way that the team played and that was very quickly followed by a home win against Wigan. We struggled to score in that game and in a game we really dominated and should have won by a lot more. But to take a 1-0 victory, it kept this impressive form going. And then away at Coventry, we easily beat them by three goals to one. A very tasty 2-0 away victory at Cardiff meant that we had to have just beat Hull to maintain a totally 100% record through January and beat them we did however we did again struggle to score and eventually it was just a penalty that managed to give us a 1-0 victory what a remarkable run this has been and we took over against Ipswich and if we look at their form before that you can see it was absolutely horrendous and I'm not surprised because the squad is not very good and so when we took over 
over. Look what's happened afterwards. And it has just been amazing. I can't understand it. And I really do believe this tactic might have broken the game. You've got to just think that this has to come to an end at some point. And I have been training them up because we've brought in a few midfielders. I've been training them up in a 4-3-3 just in case the AI does work out what we're doing and starts to get revenge on us. So I will be able to mix things up with a 4-3-3 and tighten up in defence if we start losing games in February. But... I can't believe what is happening. It is just so off the wall. It's crazy. And so today we'll be playing very quickly against Plymouth and then quickly against Fulham. And uh, FA Cup, we are required to be competitive, so we have to put up a good performance. I'm not really interested in the FA Cup, but we need to do our best. Fourth round, will they think that's competitive? I hope so, even if we lose. And then against Fulham, and I want to keep this championship form going i really feel that we could get to the playoffs if we can keep this kind of form going but i do also suspect it has to start crumbling at some point this is so unreal let's have a quick look at what has happened in the transfer window and we have brought in six players and it was a very very busy transfer window We've let go a number of players and some of them are still at the club and will be leaving in the summer. The big names amongst them are Juhara. He will be leaving going to Dinamo Zagreb. We sold him for £1.9 million. He's leaving, I think, in the summer, so it's not a big deal. Or he might have left already. I'm not quite sure. Bashir, a young boy, he will be leaving. We sold him to Burton Albion. Alan Brown also is leaving. He's going to Derry City on a free. And Kayemba, young attacking midfielder, he's gone out on loan to Eastleigh. But the players that you want to know about are the ones that we brought in. And we had to strengthen at fullback and that's what we did first we brought in rob niset from toulouse for two hundred and forty five thousand pounds he's a very good fullback he's played well so far as well and he can also play if needed as the attacking midfield on the left he's a very very fine player and we're very fortunate to have brought him in and then we brought in brook norton cuffy i've been scouting him for over a year keeping an eye on him he cost me 2.3 million pounds and uh, he's a very very good fullback and he's probably one of the best players that we have on the pitch at the moment and so i'm very happy to bring him in he's got great physicals and his mentals and technicals are not bad for this level still got a little bit of development left to do i think he's going to be an asset we also had to strengthen in midfield for definite we only had three players who could play in midfield to a reasonable level and so we brought in jay matate it's a gamble this one he's injury prone he's come in from derby for a cost of 2.6 million he is a decent player he's a ball winner by trade but i'll be using him hopefully as a box to box but he can also play as the attacking mid as a shadow striker so he's a useful asset he is a bit injury prone but i like the look of him and if he settles well he could do a very good job for us Toby Collier is a wild card. He's come in from Charlton for 59,000. My scouts and my assistant manager kept telling me to sign him as a priority. He's got a little bit of development left, I think. He's a 25-year-old. He's never reached the potential that he had as a young kid. He's come in just as a fringe player, and I think hopefully he will do a very decent job for us. Again, as a box-to-box -box midfielder to provide some support for our current two main midfielders and he's just here to do a job as and when we need him and then we have brought in Ibrahim Digbareku from Hoffenheim for 1.7 million pounds we had also strengthen at centre-back good jumping reach very good in the air very strong it's very good physicals he has good mentals he's a 23 year old who has i think a little bit more development left to do 
He's unfortunately he's not very composed and so we'll just be using him as a central defender. I don't want him hanging on to the ball very much but I think he's going to be very very much a first team player as we go into the second half of the season. And finally we've brought in Matthew Cox from Ipswich Town for 475 eventually rising to 575,000 he is a goalkeeper and we had to bring in a goalkeeper and he is now the first choice goalkeeper the problem I had a big problem is that Woodman wanted to leave and go to Everton I, I rejected any offers Everton gave us he then complained to me and went into a really bad mood and said that oh I'm a professional I suppose I'll do a decent job he wasn't doing a decent job Middlesbrough came in with an offer of a million pounds for him so I decided okay let's sell him but then he's rejected the offers from Middlesbrough so now I have two first team goalkeepers after the transfer window who are going to be vying for places but I'm not very impressed with Woodman I'm going to let him go in the summer when it comes and I think he's just going to have to put up with playing in the cups for now and lump it because he's made a rod for his own back and he's going to have to get over it and just play in the cup matches and so we need to continue with what is quite an amazing season and we have the first of these two games today coming up we have to do well against Plymouth they are a league one team and we should be beating league one teams but I do have to bear in mind that we will be playing Fulham two days later Fulham are not playing in the cup and so they will be resting over the weekend and we'll have a fresh team I need to make sure our team are fresh against Fulham as well that is a very very big game for us coming up as our second match but let's go and play Plymouth let's go and kick some balls and so a very rotated team today in the home tie against Plymouth and we have Woodman in goal with Hughes Jones Digbareku makes his debut at centre back we're going to play Hay on the left as an inverted wing back so that he covers this area here and then we'll have Whiteman at DLP he will need to come off at half time we need him fresh for Tuesday Mohamed and Ruiz will also play in the middle and Matate Doty and Niundulu who's returning from African nations duty he will play up front we had to rest players we are probably healthier and fitter than this Plymouth team but this is a game that we should be winning and I'm going to say yeah let's be strong defensively let's dominate the midfield and let's have some quality finishing out there and let's win this football match let's get into the fifth round of the FA Cup and we do have the first highlight and Mohamed will take the corner and there's a header and it is saved at the far post by the goalkeeper and it's looking good so far we're dominating possession we've had the first chance and that looks good but nothing is ever written in stone in FM we are a very rotated team here Ruiz who has been out of the side for a long time and is complaining a bit about his playing time but he gets his chance here against Plymouth he's looking to do the full back there there's a chance we have scored and it is the inverted wing back Hay who has put us ahead it's Preston 1 Plymouth nil, and maybe it was the right decision to rotate this team we will um, have to bring McCann, not McCam Whiteman off at half time I'm going to need him fit and so it's very very important that we make a good start and so far so good we are a goal up we're pretty much in control of the game and Plymouth were very tired I think coming into the game so hopefully if we're positive about what we're doing we'll go on and win this football match quite easily at the moment it's still though 1-0 we're creating chances getting shots on target that's all we can ask Plymouth have not created anything at this point we have a game plan we are closing them down in midfield or at least that's the idea and hopefully that will solve any problems that they try to give us and at the moment it's all one-way traffic but we're not scoring and that's a bit of a worry and I probably need to have a look at some of this shooting information 
uh, who is not playing very well in terms of shooting. But here is a highlight, and we have won the ball again in midfield. Lovely to see our new centre-back on the ball. I need to get used to saying his name quickly. And it's come out, though, to Whiteman. Whiteman over the top looking for Niandulu, but he can't get on the end of that. And are Plymouth going to mount an attack here? They are coming back into the game a little bit. and We need to be very careful. We need to get a second. We are not comfortable yet. Niandulu is rushing through. He's made it 2-0. And that makes me feel a little bit more comfortable. It's Preston 2, Plymouth 0. <laughs> His tactic just keeps going and going. And it doesn't matter what personnel you play them in, what roles you play them in. It just keeps going and going. Matate on... On the ball what a lovely through ball and I could have put that away and it's now Preston 2 Plymouth nil Niandulu welcome back to the team and uh, he's on the score sheet as soon as he's come back and it is Woodman in goal Woodman with a long kick upfield Niandulu looks to head it on Mateta picks the ball up he finds Ruiz in space Ruiz has a shot and that was so close to making it 3-0 we are totally in control of this game. It's not over yet, of course, but you can see just how tired Plymouth are. Their centre-back is very tired. Their Jacob Murphy on the right is very, very tired. We should be beating Plymouth quite comfortably. We are in very, very good fettle. And there's another looping header that goes over the crossbar. It remains 2-0. The only thing I'm disappointed about is the fact that we are not shooting very well, and I need to tell them at half-time, we can do another gear here, and keep going. You weren't that bad. Keep going, and you can improve, and we can really take them apart. And we're doing very, very well. We are totally dominating the game. Then do I do need to make a couple of changes, though, now. And so we have managed to take off Whitehead and in, in the middle of the park. And we're giving a run out to young Collier to see what he can do, the fringe player that we've brought in. It remains 2-0 to Preston. It's, and it's a very, very comfortable feeling at the moment. We're not looking like anything is going to happen in terms of a threat from Plymouth. Here's Corbin Yu, who's just come on as well. He's going to play 20 minutes. We need him fresh for a Tuesday. Mohamed picks up the ball in midfield and playing it around. Nice football. And here's Matate. He looks for Mohamed to Hughes. Back to Mohamed. It's nice. Play it around. Keep possession. Nice football. No need to do anything silly. We're 2-0 up. But it, <laughs> we do need to distribute the ball at times. And it comes out here. And Moreno, he looks for Hay. Hay into Niandulu. And this is lovely football. And Savu, who's just come on, has made it 3-0. That was Barcelona style. Patient build-up, waiting for the space to open. That was lovely football. And, yeah, that was absolutely beautiful passing. And it started a long, long time before he put it into the net. It's now Preston 3, Plymouth 0. An easy victory. Niandulu, that was a lovely ball through to Savu. Savu's vision to find the space. It's now 3-0. And it's now maybe time to make our final changes as we go into the last 15, 20 minutes or so. We're dominating the game. We have nothing that to worry about here. Plymouth are not looking good at all. As Savu brings it up the touchline, looks to get across in knee, and Dulu is a chance here, but we can't put it away. It's still in there, and we finally have put it away. Nyundulu has made it 4 0. And welcome back to Nyundulu, who has been away in the African nations, I believe. And he's back now, back in the team, and has scored twice today. We're 4-0 up, and that was as easy as pie. And it's a very, very comfortable, and Plymouth have offered nothing. They are very, very tired, and maybe now time to make a couple of changes, I think. And so we have made the final changes that we need to make, and I don't even need to worry about... 
who is playing well or not playing well for Plymouth. This game was too easy for Preston, for this formation. I do love this tactic. And as time is ticking on, we've been much more comfortable in this round than we were in the previous round where we had to come back from 2-0 down. We are going to go into the fifth round and that'll please the board. It will please the fans, but I suspect we will have tougher opposition in the next round. It is the final whistle. The final score is Preston 4, Plymouth 0. I expected to win that game, even with that rotated team. We have done just that. And part one of what we needed to do is over. And so we need to go away now. We have just a couple of days to prepare for Fulham. But our winning run has continued. Can we keep this going against Fulham? It will be mighty good if we can keep winning against fourth place Fulham. We will have a first team available and fresh. And so selection might be the key to this. We'll see you at the Fulham game. But just before we go to the second game against Fulham, some news that I have forgotten about, and I have hired an assistant manager. I've brought in Steve McLaren. He is good at judging player ability for this level, of course, good at judging player potential, and he has 13 tactical knowledge. He's a very determined, good people management skills, and he's also a very, very good coach. I thought finally he was the right person to bring in for the post, and we've offered him a contract for three years or so. And hopefully that problem is now solved. And also Fulham did play at the weekend. They played in the Skybet Championship and they beat Bristol City by two goals to one, which moved them up into third. This is going to be a very, very tough game. And we also had the draw for the fifth round of the FA Cup. And we will be playing Cardiff. It has not arrived in the schedule as yet, but we have been drawn at home to Cardiff in the fifth round. And so we have every chance of getting to the quarterfinals. Why not? We seem to be winning everything else. Why not get to the quarterfinals of the cup? But is this where it all starts to go downhill? And we do have a very tough fixture against Fulham coming up. Let's go and kick some balls. And so the team selection for the game against Fulham is Woodman in goal, surprisingly enough, Norton, Cuffey, Bernard, Digbaroku and Nizet at the back with Whiteman, McCann and Corbinu in the middle. Jean-Jules, Doherty and Surridge will play up front. Hopefully we are going to catch Fulham on a day that they are extremely tired but I actually don't fancy our chances too much in this game. I think the tactic finally has to crumble. And is this the day where it will all go wrong? We sometimes do struggle when we are playing against very tired teams. Interestingly, the board are now um, changing their opinions of what the result should be because both the board and the supporters are expecting a draw in this game and that's like what would that have been were we in the same position as when I took over I don't think they would be expecting a draw in that respect but we have possession and here is Norton Cuffey Norton Cuffey he finds Corbin you if we can beat Fulham today, this will be remarkable. I don't know when we're going to lose. And there's a lovely ball over the top for Surridge. Surridge is through. Surridge with his left foot drives it past the goalkeeper. It's Preston 1, Fulham 0. We are on a roll. And what a lovely ball that was. It was... Pass to, I think it was Whiteman, spotted Surridge, and that's composed. Took it down, put it on his left foot, and drove it in. It's Preston 1, Fulham 0. Can we really believe what is going on here? Because now, if this result stays this way, we are in the playoff spots. And Fulham are looking, yeah, maybe like they might be a little tired, but... Um, maybe this is going to work to our advantage that they did actually have to play. Uh, we do need to be careful There's um, with Dela Cruz and Zerbin. 
They are not creating too many chances at the moment, but we do need to keep an eye on them. We are, though, on the other hand, playing quite well, creating lots of chances, not getting too many of them on target, but all we can do is create these chances, and here we're going to have another one as Nizip finds McCann. McCann, can he find... He finds... Digbaroku, who finds Bernard. Bernard to Whiteman. Whiteman is looking over the top for Doherty, but can't find him, and the ball finds its way to the goalkeeper. Let's not give away a goal here. Um, let's win the ball. That's well done, and it finds its way to Corbinu. Corbinu making his way down the right. This if We are just totally dominating Fulham. I was not expecting this. Whiteman finds Cuffey. Cuffy is going to look inside but can't find anybody inside plays it all the way back to Bernard Bernard slowing things down that's nice looking all the way over for Doherty Doherty shot I think it skimmed the crossbar what a goal that would have been and there are several players having very very good games defensively we look very very solid some of the players are tiring but boy, oh boy, oh boy, we are looking very comfortable. I'd be happier with another goal or two. Let's go out, show everybody. Keep going. You've got the ability to win this game. Let's shock everyone. Let's get into the playoffs. This is very, very exciting stuff here at Plymouth, at Preston. If we can keep this result going, we will be at the end of this episode in the playoff spots. And who would have said that? some time ago when I took over you can see that Preston are tiring I think though maybe it's time for us to make some changes and so we have taken a couple of tired players off the pitch but here is Whiteman Whiteman with a free kick into the pot we do have a chance but I do feel he must be offside is and have we been given that one McCann was on his own and it's not being given as offside. It's being given as a goal. I really felt he was offside there. The ball into the box. No, it actually was their left-sided player who played him onside. And it is going to be a goal. This is the one across the box. But their left fullback was playing him onside. It's Preston 2. Fulham nil. I do not believe what is going on here. I think now I'm going to make a little change or two. And what I've decided to do is tell the boys to focus play down the right because their left fullback is really struggling at the moment. And maybe if we focus our play in his direction, then we might cause them a problem or two. But it is Fulham with the ball, but we have won it back. McCann, McCann. And, yeah, you can see, in fact, I should be saying focus play down the left because it's their right fullback who's tired. So that's what we'll do. We'll get them to focus play down the left and try and expose that fullback a little bit. And it is Preston, though, who are winning this game quite comfortably. Preston 2, Fulham nil. We can see that we are in the playoff spots. This is beyond my wildest expectations as Mohamed finds McCann. McCann, back in the team today, has had a very, very good game. Everybody has had a good game. A long punt upfield by Fulham, but we are totally controlling this game as Corbin U breaks into the box. Is that a penalty? Let's make it 3 0. Let's really rub Fulham's noses in the dirt. It's going to be Surridge stepping up. And can we make it 3 0? This is phenomenal. Surridge into the corner. It is 3 0. We have beaten Fulham. We've beaten Norwich. We have had that very good 3-3 draw against Middlesbrough. We are flying. This Preston team will take on anybody. Surridge has made it. Three goals to nil. We are unstoppable at the moment. Let's get the final whistle now, referee. I've seen enough. I expect Fulham want to go home. 
and they wouldn't want to give another goal away as Corbin Yu, he's looking to break again, he finds Nizit on the left, Nizit to Corbin Yu, let's make it 4, it is 4-0, Matata has made it 4-0 and Fulham are dead and buried, what a performance this has been, we planned it better than Fulham we played our reserve team on the weekend we were fitter and stronger and we have put them away this formation is out of this world and we don't need any more highlights now Fulham would love to go home to get on the bus now they've been embarrassed and we are quite happy to go and have a bath now, referee. But it is going to be Fulham, but that goes harmlessly into the side netting. It remains 4 0. We're all very, very happy. And let's yep, bring on our final substitution for the last few seconds. We have hammered Fulham. It's Preston 4, Fulham 0. I don't believe what's going on here. I'm pretty sure the board and the fans don't believe it. And I'm pretty sure you guys don't believe it either. This is quite remarkable. We have, in a couple of months, gone from 21st all the way up to the playoffs. I have never seen anything like this in my life in FM. And as you can tell, I'm absolutely astonished. We have not lost since the turn of the year. This is something quite remarkable. And so that's it for this video. And if you are new to the channel and you like FM content, then why not subscribe, like, watch and comment, help the channel to grow and help us to support all that good stuff that you can see scrolling up above. And I think I'll just play through a while. I'm not really sure where we'll come back. Maybe with the FA Cup fifth round. Depends how soon that is. Maybe, yeah, we'll look at Cardiff and Ipswich in the next episode. Can we get through to the quarterfinals of the Cup? Is this run going to keep going in the Championship? We'll be back very soon. And all that remains to be said now is see you in the next episode.